I have no, no problem with the officials themselves. All across the league, we have really good officials. I have a problem with the way we're legislating defense out of the game. That's what we're doing in the NBA. The way we're teaching the officials, we're just enabling players to BS their way to the foul line. If I were a fan, I wouldn't have wanted to watch the second half of that game. It was disgusting. Baiting, baiting refs into calls, but the refs have to make those calls because that's how they're taught. I have a real problem with the way we've legislated defense out of the game in this league, and players are really smart in this league, and for, for over the last decade or so, they've gotten smarter and smarter, and they're just... Um, are just enable we have enabled the players and they are taking full advantage and it's a parade to the free throw line and it's disgusting to watch thanks as you can see warriors head coach steve kerr is well aware that his team's top player in stephen curry's game isn't based around exploiting officials with flops in order to get to the foul line unlike many others obviously steph himself knows he's not a flopper as well it does cater to the guys that can sell calls. When there's physicality, it's tough because it's inconsistent at times on either side. Just consistency is, is key when it comes to understanding how you can defend. It was tough tonight. Slowed the whole game down. Obviously, he made every free throw and, um, you know, changed the momentum, played into their hands. And until things change, you guys, you have to adjust. But it's frustrating. With Golden State holding Jokic to an off night, conversely, the officials weren't having it, Summed up by rookie Brandon Pajemski. Players are, are good at selling fouls. I mean, Jokic is, is 4 for 12, which we love, and, but he shoots 18 free throws. The Nuggets deserve credit for beating the Warriors on Christmas Day, but the officiating crew of Courtney Kirkland, Michael Smith, and Trey Maddox maddeningly stole Christmas for both fan bases. Most frustratingly, a game before this, Curry was called for a flopping technical foul after a natural fall to the floor following an acrobatic layup where his defender demonstrates illegal hands on the hip contact. Given all the flops we see from players in today's game that are glossed over, Steph receiving a technical foul on that was ridiculous. This flopping technical foul rule, which the NBA inserted in 2023 summer, is about as subjective as it gets, considering refs have been rewarding actual flops from the likes of certain superstars with foul shots. The whistle was incredibly soft, really both ways all Christmas between the dubs and nugs, but three crucial calls in the last four minutes alone were brutal. Firstly, Kirkland, Smith, and Maddox display they aren't even watching the game by failing to call this clear offensive basket interference on Aaron Gordon. You have to wait for the ball to clear the cylinder according to the NBA rulebook, and this clearly doesn't clear the cylinder before AG puts it back. This should be waved off with the Warriors gaining possession, but instead two illegal points are rewarded in a one-point game down the stretch. Less than 20 seconds later, again in a one-point game, Jokic leans into Wiggins to draw contact. The NBA rulebook made leaning in for contact illegal before the 2021-22 season, and to be fair to the majority of officials, they've done a bit better in the third year of this rule being enforced. Give credit to the officials who've done a good job. My question is, considering once the playoffs hit and physicality increases, nonsensical flopping is then glossed over by officials, why should us fans have to deal with it during the regular season? Another question of mine is, why are officials never given fines for bad calls, while simultaneously, in most cases, players and coaches are fined for both technical fouls and even talking about bad calls post-game? Moving on to the third wrong call in the clutch, which comes after Jokic hands it off to Murray. As you can see, Jokic momentarily latches onto the arm of Wiggins before flailing back. However, the refs call a foul on Wiggins. Given the Nuggets are in the bonus, Jokic is rewarded two more free throws for that flop, and you shouldn't blame Jokic for selling contact because floppers in general have been manipulating the way NBA officials have been taught for years. Jokic outshot Curry 18-1 to at the foul line purely based off his ability to sell and unnaturally initiate contact as opposed to being legitimately hacked. As Kerr alluded to, and from my perspective as both a defensive-minded player when stepping between the lines and a defensive-minded fan when watching the games, it's disappointing to say the least that fundamental defense and the slightest bit of physicality no longer gets rewarded in today's game, and a looser whistle, at least during the regular season, doesn't seem like it's going to be returning anytime soon, proved by Commissioner Adam Silver in an interview from seven months ago which we're about to look at. Take this next clip as you will. Will there ever be a time where the hand check comes back? There was a point, I believe, you know, probably in around the late 90s when the game became too physical. Mm. And I think we lost some of From yours, you mean? Yeah, and I think for our fans, from the aesthetic enjoyment of the game, where it de-emphasized the particular skill a player had mm. and maybe weighted too heavily um, physicality, where mm. 
a big, strong player could come in and prevent a incredibly skilled player from doing those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. I think of, not that he's a small guy, but a smaller player like Steph Curry can do on the floor. I think that his ability to shoot, his ability to move mm. through the paint, that if guys could just bang him and knock him Shut to the ground, up. as that was once the case in the league, right. I don't think that would be a better brand of basketball. So the elite promotional workhorse that is Adam Silver essentially just told us casuals that Stephen Curry wouldn't survive in the 90s. What a hot take, my guy. Ironic part is, even in the modern age, if you watch basketball nowadays, you know physicality still ramps up in the playoffs, with refs loosening up the whistle tremendously once April, May, and June hit. Silver's statement ignorantly disregards that, as well as how Steph's been able to make up for his lack of height and physical force with the greatest three-point stroke in the history of basketball and all-around polished finesse. Bottom line is, for the refs, A. Neither team's fan base on any given night likes to watch free throws. B. Neither team's fan base on any given night likes to watch biased refs. And C. Neither team's fan base on any given night likes to watch flopping get rewarded with foul shots. Aside from the ugly courts, the in-season tournament was a cute addition as I noted after the Lakers winning in this video right here, but the real way to bring new viewers in and keep said viewers here is to hire unbiased, fast on their feet officials who are elite at judging actual contact as opposed to a player's reaction to said contact. It all goes back to, as Kerr alluded to, the way these officials are taught, and right now, the flopping technical foul thing hasn't worked whatsoever, Adam Silver needs to think much bigger. I would suggest the training camp for refs that the NBA publicizes that enforces entirely new teaching methods in terms of valuing positioning over flopping. Your boy D Flow could lead it with a PowerPoint, but in all seriousness, the NBA needs to get it together because the flopping slows down the game we all love significantly, and it makes it an unwatchable product when the rules the league's enforced aren't followed by its officials. Hashtag stop the flop. Two shoutouts for my last upload and this one next time, but I want to know what needs to change with the refs in your opinion. Competing Community Speaks with your take, D-Flow signing off.